Paul. Come on up. That'll do. Okay, um, firstly, I'd like to pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, if my story this morning has similarities with life with any person here, and they really want to be a better person, I pray that in Jesus' mighty name, the Holy Spirit would open their mind and their heart so they could follow the path that God has for them. Amen. Just a little title for this one is, I've called this my journey into uh, self-reflection. And uh, I guess we all look in a mirror at times and we see a reflection. What's it say to you? You know, wow, what a person or a beautiful or handsome person God has created there. Well, back in 2021, towards the end of the year, I looked into a mirror, what I saw standing there was a bit different. It was your typical Sunday Christian. I think you know what I mean. Full of earthly desires. So what changed my view? Well, I was dealing with marriage separation. Instead of playing the blame game, I looked for God, to God for answers. When you look to God for answers and really mean it, he will lead you to them. So this revelation this morning for me in my reflection has three sections and the first one is the revelation of what God showed me. And it's found in Colossians 3, verses 1 to 4. Since you've been raised to new life with Christ, set your sights on the realities of heaven where Christ sits in the place of honour at God's right hand. Think about the things of heaven, not the things of earth, for you died to this life and your real life is hidden with Christ in God. And when Christ, who is your life, is revealed to the whole world, you will share in all his glory. So what did this scripture reveal to me, about me? Yes, I did church, attend church regularly. I also helped out a lot in the community. I was very good at what I did and very competitive. But I was also a very competitive shooter for target shooting. Oh, with containers full of medals and awards even become a licensed firearms instructor and coach. Some people would even say, outside of work, shooting was my life. And all this for whose glory? Certainly not God's. So we come back to the scripture which says, think about things of heaven, not of things of earth. Ouch. Then he goes on to say, for you died to this life and your real life is hidden in Christ, in God, with Christ in God. Wow. This really meant things to me that some things had to change and needed to be changed. And it was up to God was going to show me. And it wasn't far away. The very next verses in Colossians. So put to death the sin, the sinful earthly things lurking within you. Have nothing to do with sexual immorality, impurity, lust and evil desires. Don't be greedy, for a greedy person is an idolater, worshipping the things of this world. Because of these things... The anger of God is coming. You used to do these things when your life was still part of this world. At the time, 
these five verses really hit home. I think this is when the Holy Spirit faced me and I reckon he was armed with a baseball bat. Nobody said turning your life around and reconnecting with Jesus was easy. So let's start from where, what I found in this. Sexual immorality, impurity, lust and evil desires. Well, there we're facing the biggest trap in the world today. One of these is the area of pornography. And folks, it's one of Satan's biggest tools today. And some surveys I've read stated that 60% of Christian people are affected. And I can tell you, it is a hard battle to walk away from. Then I read on, don't be greedy, for a greedy person is an idolater, worshipping the things of this world. This is where some big decisions were made. For you see, I realised target shooting had become an idol. It controlled my life and I let it. I had 32 competition rifles, eight pistols, and enough specialised target equipment to fill eight six-foot tables and the floor beneath them. It took 20 years to accumulate all that and it had to go. I walked away from it all and strangely it felt good as I was going out the door. So then we read on but now is the time to get rid of anger, rage, malicious behaviour, slander and dirty language. Don't lie to each other for you've stripped off your old sinful nature and all its wicked deeds. Wow. Time to get rid of anger, rage, malicious behaviour, slander and dirty language. Boy, I had some anger issues here. See, during the few years prior to this event, through work and taking on too much, my stress levels had been very high. High stress levels called little, cause little un, or controlled annoyances to turn into anger. Unfortunately, anger interferes with clear thinking, leading to more mistakes, which fuels the anger, turning it to, into rage. I can remember many instances standing in the shed Screaming, why me? In reality, I only needed to ask myself some simple questions. What did I need to do right now? And what can wait? What needs to be changed and what needs to stay the same? And the anger was gone. So I needed to put on my new nature and be renewed as you learn to know your creator and be like him. And what does this look like? So back in the scriptures, back on leading on from Colossians, verse 11 to 15. In this new life, it doesn't matter if you are a Jew or a Gentile, circumcised or uncircumcised, barbaric or uncivilised, slave or free. Christ is all that matters and he lives in all of us. Since God chose you to be the holy people he, lo- he loves, you must clothe yourself in tender-hearted mercies, kind-heartedness, humility, gentleness and patience. Make allowance for each other's faults and forgive anyone who offends you. Remember the Lord forgave you, so you must forgive others. Above all, clothe yourself with love which binds us all together in perfect harmony. And let the peace that comes from Christ rule in your hearts. For as members of one body, you are called to live in peace and always be thankful.
these five verses showed me or showed my or me what my reflection should look like. My first step was to recognise and fully believe Christ is all that matters and he lives in all of us. I know when I truly believe this in my heart, I understood everything I have is his. Holding nothing back and being totally at peace with it. And let the peace that comes from Christ rule in your hearts. So what should this hunk of skin and bone look like? Scripture tells me. You must clothe yourself with tender-hearted mercy, kindness, humility, gentleness and patience. Something I realised at this point, that there were a lot of changes in my, my life that had to happen. And it doesn't end there. For the scripture says, make allowance for each other's faults and forgive anyone who offends you. Some of you might have heard there's a statement used, and I've used it. I don't get mad, I just get even. Well, yeah, I used to use it, often. Generally in a joking manner. But really it frightens me to think that I'm, I might have said it and meant it. I have approached a few friends that I used it with regularly, mainly jokingly, and asked for forgiveness. And I have asked God to reveal any instances where I've used this statement as... Uh, the statement uh, and issues still outstanding and I've addressed those issues as the Lord has revealed them so and the ultimate guide which allowed me to change my life above all clothe yourself with love which binds us all together in perfect harmony It is this love which holds all the other virtues in place. Through a lot of prayer and changes, most of which I wasn't even aware of, I found that, firstly, uncontrolled anger in my life has ceased to exist. And I let the peace that comes from Christ rule my heart. I let that peace rule my heart when times are tough. We can hand our troubles to Christ and be in peace. How? We have to trust him. Because without that trust, we're never at peace. So today, I don't have to rely on what I see in the mirror. I rely on God's word and he's leading in my life. Thank you.